Hello. Today I'd like to introduce you to a code pattern using Akka and DB2 Event Store. We'll use Akka Streaming and WebSockets to feed data into Event Store. As always, the code and the step-by-step -step instructions are in a public GitHub repo. This one's at github.com slash ibm slash DB2 Event Store Akka Streams. The repo includes two Jupyter Notebooks, one to set up the database and one to show the data. This will run with DB2 Event Store, and I use the desktop edition. It's a free developer edition, so you, I'm running this on my laptop. We'll also have code to run a Scala app, which uses Akka Streams and uses Akka HTTP. So with Akka, we have an easy way to create WebSockets, and we'll use the WebSocket to feed data in, and then we'll use Akka Streams to process the data. We'll use Alpaca to parse the CSV da data and then we'll insert it into a DB2 event store table. Once we have the data in DB2 event store, we have a notebook to show the data, and it serves a couple of different purposes. One, we want to show you how to interact with DB2 event store from a notebook. The other is we want you to have an easy way to prove that your data inserts are working. So we'll take a look at that, and we'll show you what you can do to visualize and manipulate some data once you have it in event store. The code to work with Akka Streams and WebSockets with Akka HTTP is so powerful and concise that I thought I'd jump right in and show you the code. First, on the default slash path, I just put a simple HTML message so that if you hit the server, at least it will say something, you won't get a 404. Right below that is where I create the WebSocket. So that will be under WebSocket slash order item. And you see it's a one-liner that says, when you hit that WebSocket, call the WebSocket routine. WebSocket routine is defined above, and it is also pretty simple. First, I have this writer sync. That's where our event store sync is defined. I've got it set up to do two different kinds of syncs. But the stream handling comes in two different ways, either as a text message or a binary message. In the client that I use for testing, that basically means you're pasting in a string of text or you're opening a file and sending the whole CSV file. So the only real difference there is the CSV scanning. For a text message, we're using a line scanner, and I have to provide the headers as strings so it knows how to map the data to uh, the, the headers in a map. Down below, you'll see the to map as strings function. This one takes the first line as a header. So this is a CSV file where you have your typical column headers followed by rows of data. In either case, once we parse the data, we'll call it run with and send it to that writer sync that was above. First, we call this to row function that is also defined above here. And that is to take the strings that we get and to map them to data types, do a little bit of checking. And the event store sync that we're using expects a, a Spark row, so it's creating the proper data type. Then we wanted to show something more than just slurping data into a table. So here we have divert to with a condition. And what this is doing is it's saying if the quantity is negative, send this one to the cancel table instead of the orders table. So another simple example, basically a one-liner here, just using the divert to to show that you can do something a little different other than just feeding it into the regular table. And then the last line here is we're feeding into our event store sync. Now this repo does include the code for event store sync and event store flow. And also the divert to example shows you can do different things, but this would be a good place to experiment if you want to try throttling or batching or things like that. There's a lot that you can do with Akka Streams. Before you start the app, make sure you run the notebook to create the database and create the tables. So I already ran it and we have step-by-step -step instructions, but you can see the tables are empty. One thing to note before you run this, make sure you put in your IP address. So you need to change the X's to your IP address. So this containerized notebook can communicate with your event store, and you should see these empty tables. Now, I've also already opened up the orders notebook here, 
and I just want to again show you I put in the IP address and I'm going to run the first few cells just to show that I have the tables and the tables are empty and then we'll feed some data in so we can see that the data is showing up. And there you see we've got zero records in both the orders table and the cancels table. Now let's start the app with SBT run. Notice it says it's running on localhost. Again, I'm running on my laptop. And that 8080, if I click on that, I brought up the browser and my other screen, and you notice the message. So you could do REST services, you could do gets and posts, and implement a UI if you want. Uh, but we really wanted to use WebSockets as a fast way of streaming data in. So when I connect to the WebSocket, you'll see I get a little feedback there. And I'm connected, now I can send it text or a file. Uh, this is Advanced REST Client, which also works fine with WebSockets. You could use your whatever client you prefer since it's a standard interface. Now, if I want to paste in text, I'll just take it out of the example CSV file. I can paste in one record or several. I press Send. It sent those three rows of data uh, into, in as, into the WebSocket, handled by my Aka Streams, and it's going to show up in the notebook. So if I run this count again, I should see... Yep, there's three records got into my uh, event store database. Now, if I want to use a file, this is really handy for testing. I can just use select file, open the CSV file that's in the repo. So clone the repo, open that up, and send it. And now I sent um, hundreds of records all at once. Notice down below, I had some leftover messages there. But uh, with WebSockets, you get back and forth communication. So I sent the data and I got a response. But the data is continuing to feed in. And if I run this again to get the count, now I'm up over 200. And I also got some that were diverted to that cancel table. So, so far we've already integrated Akka streams with DB2 Event Store. We fed data in with a generic WebSocket client. And here we are in a Jupyter Notebook taking a look at the data. And this is all done on my laptop, so it's convenient to try out as a developer. But remember, Akka and DB2 Event Store, they're both designed to scale and handle a lot large amounts of data. So when you get this running on a cluster, you can really do a lot more with it. But let's play with it as a developer. So let's take a look now that we have it in the, in the notebook. Let's look at the data. The first thing I did here is, well, I did some simple queries like the count in the top 10. But here I'm doing a little calculation. So I've got units and I've got unit price. So I wanted to calculate a gross. I want to make sure it's a decimal. And then I can do the top 10 in a nice little list in the notebook. But what if I want to do graphics? Well, here I am in a Scala notebook and the notebook that came with DB2 Event Store. So I'm using Brunel to take a look at the data. And in this case, first I took that gross sales that I calculated. I want to look at the top 15 by sales. Notice I can select one. I've got two charts linked together with a lot of tool tips. And again, this is a very concise language that lets you do some nice graphing so you can visualize your data. And then down below I did another one. This one's really very similar, but you have orders. Let's look at the units. So again, top 15 by units, different color scheme. You can still hover, you can click, and you can take a look at them. Manipulating the data is something I wanted to show off a little bit in this notebook. So here I took the date and I turned it into a, an hour of day. I've also done day of week, um, but this is a good one to see when the time, when the orders are coming in and from what country. And by the way, here I'm doing it by invoice. So even though multiple records come in per invoice, I'm using group buys to get a count of invoices. So again, different ways of aggregating, different ways of manipulating the data. And here with Brunel, you get some nice charts. I'm showing a map of Europe because the example data is mostly from Europe. 
but you could change that to a world map, a USA map. Um, the mapping is extremely easy. Again, they're, they're tied together and you have your color schemes and you can show your data. And the one last thing I did is I wanted to show it by hour and country. Again, this is invoices, so another aggregation thing that I mentioned. And this is time of day. So this would look better if I filled in the hours or had 24 hours of data in here. Um, but you can see wh when's your peak, when's your quiet period, as well as where's the data coming from. So I think, and I hope this is one of those code patterns that will continue to evolve and grow. But so far you can see we've done a lot with a little bit of code, and we're using Akka Streams, Akka HTTP for WebSockets, and DB2 Event Store.